lecture, we'll talk about image filtering. And this is the outline. First, we'll talk about how we can represent images as a function. And after that, we'll talk about how we can extract useful information from these images. And this will cover a histogram of images, how we can extract edges, how we can smooth noise uh, in, in, in the images. Uh, we'll cover like two important concepts, uh, convolution and correlation. So these will be used for filtering. And again, uh, these will be used later as well when we talk about convolutional neural networks. Then we'll talk about image derivatives, how we can uh, use to extract meaningful information from images. And finally, we will uh, talk about like some basic examples of, of filtering. Okay, so these are like the chapters uh, from these books. If you want to go into more detail uh, of uh, any of these topics, I will refer uh, you to these uh, books. So let's start with image uh, digitization. Now, in the real world, if we are actually observing something, everything is continuous for us. We, we can't say that, okay, we are at the first pixel or we are at the second pixel, right? We can't actually divide it. And that's also true for if you think about uh, if you are trying to measure something in real world. Uh, let's say you have a scale. In a scale, it's kind of discrete. You can say that, okay, one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, there is some precision there, right? But if you look at like the objects in, in your in your environment, you can go like in as much detail as you can. It, it, it's never going to end. So that's kind of continuous space. But as we move on to computers, we'll have to be discrete. We cannot capture these images in a continuous space. So therefore, what we have to do is we have to perform image digitization. And this is basically just transforming this continuous space into discrete space. And this image digitization, it has like two main steps. The first one is called sampling and the second one is called quantization. So we'll cover uh, these two uh, in detail now. First of all, let's try to understand like this image digitization in a very simple one dimensional space. For example, we have a function f, which takes as a x as input and it produces y. So it's a very simple one dimensional function. Okay, so later we will see how we can represent images as function but let's start with this uh, simple case. If you describe this function in this uh, two-dimensional two coordinate space, and let's say this curve represents this function. Okay? So what's happening here is the x over here corresponds to the x-axis, and this is called a uh, domain of this function. Domain means like on what values this function will operate. So this function will take values starting from zero, maybe this is one, two, three, four, right? So this is called a uh, domain of the function. And the output of the function, which is represented by, by y, that's called range of the function. And in this case, the y-axis represents uh, that range, okay? Now, as I said, image digitization, it has two steps, sampling and uh, quantization. Sampling is discretization of the domain and quantization refers to discretization of the range, all right? So let's try to understand like how we can discretize these two axes here. So for example, this is like another function f and uh, y, is the, y is the range, t is the domain here. Now the first step, which was sampling, that was, uh, as I said, quantization of this axis. So what we do is instead of having these continuous values, we pick certain values. So, and the value should be like, maybe we divide it uh, based on some interval. So these values, T1, T2, T3, T4, these are the discrete values, which will act as range for this function. And converting the continuous space to these values, that's called sampling. What it means is this function then is only defined at these points, all right? You can't define that function between T1 and T2. Okay, similarly, you can discretize the y-axis, which is the range of this function. And in this case, what will happen is if you think about, uh, of course, this function will be continuous, right? If it's like a, some, some equation, which, which can be differentiable, it will be continuous function. So what will happen is if you use the value of t1, it will give you some value of y, let's say at this location, similarly t2 and t3, you get these values. Now, what you do is you say that we are not going to use all the values in this y-axis. We are only going to use some certain values. And what's going to happen is the values which this function is returning, we are going to round them off. 
and the surrounding is called actually discretization. Okay, so that was a a, a single like one dimensional function. We can generalize that to two dimensional function as well. And your images are two dimensional function. And in this case, what's going to happen is you will discretize not just one axis. You will discretize both x and y axis because it's a two dimensional function. Okay, but it's the same process. But you have to perform in, on all the uh, on on both the axes, and similarly, like your range is always going to be like a single uh, a single axis. Why this vertical axis in this case? The, the process remains the same here. And if you try to represent that as like a, a matrix over here, what this means is you are dividing that continuous space into this kind of grid. Okay, so in this grid, your X axis and Y axis, they will have only discrete values. Let's say one, two, three, four, all the way up to M and one, two, three, four, all the way up to N. So these cells here becomes range of your function and whatever value these pixels can actually uh, have, they define the, uh, the, range, uh, the range of this, uh, of this function. N. And again, we will have to discretize those values as well to complete the second step of digitization. And of course, we can extend that to 3D function as well. The only change here will be like, instead of two axes, we'll have three axes here, and you will have to discretize uh, all those three axes. Now let's try to understand uh, both the steps using a digitization of this arc over here. So let's say we have this arc in this uh, 2D space. All right, now what we do is, so this, this actual arc is actually very continuous, right? So what we do is we create like this kind of grid, where we have these steps in uh, x-axis and let's say in the y-axis, and we can only have values at these cells, at the center, wherever like these x's are crossing. Okay, so the the continuous curve was the original curve, but these blocks which I'm showing, this is the discretized version. Okay, and you can note here that like we are only assigning values when these uh, axes are crossing. And if we just omit like this uh, continuous curve, that's, you, you can st still see like the uh, digitized version. So that was uh, sampling. Now, coming to the second step, which is like uh, quantization, what we do is we, we can only have, let's say two values, zero and one. So all these like white spaces over here, all these have zero, right? Which means like the arc is not present. And when, wherever it's gray, that just say that, okay, arc is present. So we just store two values. But this arc might have like more than two values, right? Because it will be the full range from zero to 256. So that was an arc. This is actually showing a real uh, grayscale image. And if you try to understand this, uh, this axis and this axis is actually uh, the grid, which is forming the image. And this is uh, giving like the resolution of the image. In this case, it's 150 cross 150, which means like this image has 150 times 150 pixels. And this vertical axis over here is just showing you the intensity at each pixel. And again, this is kind of discrete because we can say that, okay, exactly like which grid cell in this range has like actually what value. And again, that value will be discrete. It will be coming from uh, the range over here. Okay. So basically what we can do is if you have to define an image as a function, the, the rectangular grid, which I showed you in the last slide that uh, acts as a, that acts as, acts as a like a range of uh, domain of that function, let's say that that function is P and the values that, uh, the values that function P can take is any of the grid cells. Okay, so it will be like X comma Y uh, coordinate. And then it will store like each grid cell will, uh, will store a value which will be like the range of that function. And it is called like the pixel value. Okay, that's how you represent your images in form of functions. And this is just uh, exactly showing that. Uh, so this is your grid. And each of these like uh, white uh, circles over here, these are like your uh, coming from your domain, which are like the representing the grid cell in, in this uh, X, Y uh, coordinate. And the grayscale value is actually the, uh, the range what value we are storing at that particular location. And again, uh, that can have like some discrete set of values. So you know that uh, we are talking about like a 
the bit depth of an image, right? So that bit depth actually defines the uh, range of your image function. So then this xy grid is kind of domain of that function, which you are using to define your uh, image and the values which uh, these uh, pixels, these locations can store, they represent uh, the range. Same goes for RGB images. It's just like, instead of a single channel, it will have three channels and each channel will have a domain and a range. The domain is not going to change because all these uh, three channels corresponds to like the same space. And again, the range will also be same most of the time. If it's 8-bit, it's going to be 0 to uh, 256. Now let's try to understand like how sampling and uh, this uh, digitization actually affects the actual images. Now, the first step of digitization was sampling. So sampling will define what will be the resolution of your image. Okay. So if you're going to sample like at very bigger steps, which means that your image will have a very small resolution, let's say on the left. But if you are going to sample like very closely, then your image resolution will be very high and the quality will be very good, which is shown on the right. So sampling has a direct correlation with the image resolution. Okay, And if, if you think about this, your camera has this uh, metric, right? Megapixels, how many megapixels your camera can capture images at. So that represents the sampling rate. The second step, which is quantization, it actually indicates the quality of the image, which you're going to see. If you are going to like create discrete steps uh, at a distance, then it means that you are actually using a very low uh, bit depth. For example, just four colors, you're going to see something like this. And if you are going to use like your uh, discrete steps, which are very close to each other, then you will get like a very high quality image. Okay. So these two are like both part of digitization, but they like correlate to different uh, properties of your images. Now, there's another interesting aspect. Uh, again, it's resolution, but it's different from the resolution, which I told you, like the image resolution, which is which defines like how many pixels you have. It's called dots per inch. This has significance to like 3D, your, your 3D environment, okay? And the idea here is, uh, you might have heard that uh, your image is, uh, has like, let's say 72, D, uh, 72 DPI or 300 DPI. This is kind of a norm which means that if you measure the distance of like, let's say inch in a real world, then how many pixels that one inch will be? So this, this is also called resolution, but it's different from the resolution we were talking earlier. Right? So this will define like when you, when you try to print that image, let's say in a paper, then what will be the quality? Okay, because this has like the real correlation with the actual distance in your 3D environment. Okay, so this DPI is a dot per inch. It's, it's saying over here. And this is, this is entirely different from uh, the, the sampling part which you were discussing. All right, so again, this is a, a, a simple example like covering all of those things. And this is showing you actually like how your pixels are actually discrete. They are not continuous, right? Because this is kind of a coarse scale we are using. And again, at each pixel, you can see that what value is being stored. And that value is again, not continuous. So it's showing both the aspects at the same time. All right, then just, just one last uh, point here. This is really important. So images are not just like images which you capture using your uh, regular camera, right? Images can have different forms. And when we do computer vision, we might have these RGB, uh, these normal natural uh, images, but these are also like images. So this is, let's say ultrasound, this is your uh, MRI and this is infrared, right? all these kind of different modalities of data can also be represented at, uh, as images. So there's something to, uh, to know because when you are developing your algorithms, it's not going to be just operating on this kind of image. You might have algorithms or similar kind of algorithms which might also operate on these kind of images, okay? 